did it in the New Testament church and the lives of the believers. Father God, we pray and we ask, oh God, that you would do it, um, Lord, in our lives as well, God. We pray that, uh, Lord, uh, as we follow you, God, let there be a wholehearted obedience, wholehearted, Lord, trust, um, God. And as we, Lord, follow you, God, even as you promised that you promised that you will make us fishers of men. Yes, Lord, each one of us, Lord, we want to be proclaimers of truth, God. We want to be fishers of men, God, uh, in your hands, O oh Master. We want to be vessels of honor, God. And uh, to that end, Lord, we ask, O oh God, that you would perfect that which concerns us, Father God, uh, making us effective, O oh God, uh, in that area, God. Uh, and I just pray, God, even as the word says, that um, that your strength, O oh God, overshadows and us, uh, Lord, uh, our weaknesses are swallowed up in your strength, God. And uh, Father, we ask, oh God, that um, you would just overshadow all areas of weakness in our lives and uh, that we might be vessels of honor in your hands, that we might be, God, uh, vessels of righteousness, God. And uh, uh, yes, Father God, that we might receive and that we might overflow and uh, that people will be directed to you, Father God, that they will see the good works and be drawn to you, Master. Yes, Father God, I pray that even as we follow you, God, that we will be uh, equipped, oh God, to be men and women of God who, who minister, God, with your power, who minister with your wisdom, Lord. Yes, Lord, change us, transform us, God, uh, into who you want us to be, where you want us to be, uh, Lord, and to reach out to the people whom you want us to reach out to. So we submit ourselves into your mighty hands. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Okay, so let's um, yeah, let's continue from where we stopped last uh, last class. Um, so we looked at um, we were looking at the you know different keys for effective preaching, um, and we and we also looked at you know if if it is a situation where um, we need to uh, let's say a workshop or a seminar or uh, where it has a time for interaction right uh, interaction with the audience then here are some things to keep in mind right um, first of all um, to be alert so that we receive the question well right to understand the question so we don't go off on a tangent and answer something else which was not asked but uh, answer to the point uh, so that the people are helped right so to understand the question and uh, and also Sometimes what happens is uh, people are very quiet, you know, till that first question comes, and then you know others would follow through. But if there are no questions, uh, or if if maybe there's just one or two questions, you know, maybe you, uh, you know, maybe we can prompt, you know, saying, "Have you considered this? You know, what do you think about this?" Right? And uh, and since it's a you know it's a forum where people can ask, and maybe people can even. Uh, engage in a discussion so um, you could ask you know as a speaker you could facilitate that and uh, you know ask a question or prompt some kind of a uh, facilitated discussion right so um, so to be prepared for that okay what what kind of questions could possibly uh, people could possibly ask uh, if I'm talking about this topic right um, so we could be ready with one or two uh, which would help and uh, and yeah, so the thing is to be attentive, to listen to the question, because the thing is, when we hear the first few words, our mind is already formulating answers. You know, what do you think uh, of this thing? And then you hear the topic and you're already, you know, you're not listening to the rest of the question, but you're already thinking of, okay, maybe where is that in the verse, Bible? Maybe it's in, you know, in the scripture, maybe I could share that. And you're already there. But the thing is to take uh, time and be attentive to listen to uh, what is the body of the question, or what is the nature of the question, so that we can uh, answer appropriately. Okay, um, so this also gives rise to uh, maybe there are people who want to talk um, about that topic. Maybe they have additional questions. Maybe they have some personal uh, questions of a personal nature on the topic, right? And then um, so be open to um, them meeting after the meeting. Uh, and then asking those questions. So these are, you know, great opportunities to minister. Great opportunities to, like, even in a pastoral setting, that happens. Um, so to be open to discussing it further, um, and not, uh, you know, 
uh, shutting down immediately you know, my work is done and i'm just going uh, you know so yeah so um some things that we can do uh, we can actually uh, if we want to improve our um, uh, our speaking style um, we can always record uh, nowadays we have um, so much of um, you know so many gadgets uh, our our own simple mobile phone itself so we can record and uh, and listen to it and uh, and see how, where we can improve uh, where we can change i was telling um, john paul the other day I was listening to one of the, you know, some of the morning devotions that I was doing, and then one particular thing, uh, I was making a lot of, um, uh, well, all these noises like um, uh, um uh, and you know, then I made a mental note: I should, I should avoid doing that. I should be clear about what because it doesn't sound good. It can be distracting. Um, so I just said, okay, I should make a mental note of that. I should avoid it the next time. I do whatever it takes to avoid that. So, uh, hearing yourself uh, speak, hearing your uh, audio or video, listening to it always helps. So it can give you a very realistic thing. You know, it's um, uh, you can assess it for yourself and uh, make changes. Right? Okay. Uh, so that's about uh, staying alert about for questions and also um, improving oneself. Uh, if there is an opportunity to get feedback, we can do that also. Yeah, I, I remember certain workshops, they have feedback about, you know, each speaker actually had a uh, feedback uh, form, which we, we, we could actually write. And, um, and we can nowadays, we can do it online. Just send a link and maybe you can WhatsApp it, text it, and you can get a feedback about uh, how the session was. So that will give us, you know, one is about language, um, the way we presented things. Um, we learn about that. The second thing is also, what was their takeaway? How did people uh, respond to what was shared? And what was their learning? Okay, so then that also gives some insight as to um, how did we communicate what we did. You know, that if, if there's something that they understood, which is, which is not what you've shared, Right, uh, so there's been a gap. There's been a you know you meant this, but the takeaway was something else. And then you realize that oh, hey, I I better you know communicate it well. I better explain it well. I made a joke of it, but they seem to have taken it pretty seriously, and uh, maybe they got upset or you know whatever. So we can change our style of communication even from that you know from the content of um, their learnings so that so taking a feedback uh, is, is good again when it comes to taking feedback um, well certain comments could be very personal certain things can be nasty even uh, don't worry okay um, the practical thing is don't look at the feedback immediately after you know, after your session, after you've spoken, um, don't look at those things, uh, feedback forms or those comments. Uh, don't do it immediately because you're at the most vulnerable point in life. You know, that you've made yourself vulnerable, you've shared your heart, maybe. Um, so it's best that you don't do it now. You know, you're emotionally, you're not in the place to look at things objectively, right? You're saying, oh, and I spend so much time i did again with this thing and this is what i people are saying right so uh, so don't do it immediately do it probably the next day i would say even give one day to just come back to normal and uh, um, and then look at it right um, so that would help okay um, so in the notes, there are a few other things that we, uh, some practical things. If, if you're ministering in a small group uh, and if you're helping others to teach and uh, preach and so on. So some uh, practical information there so you can go through that. Okay. So now if you're sharing the word, if you're ministering the word as a pastor, okay, um, which means that you are going to be with that audience for for a specific amount of time okay you want to see them if it's if it's going to be a year if they are regular you have 52 sundays in a year if not more 
uh, 52 opportunities to, to talk to them, to minister to them, and then um, you're going to be meeting them. So the dynamics of what you preach uh, and you know uh, how you minister changes a bit. Okay. Uh, when you consider a visiting uh, pastor or guest minister, uh, and vis-a-vis -vis, you know you yourself who's going to be there through the year, now that uh, certain things need to be kept in mind. Okay. Um, so uh, what are some of those things? Okay. So when we minister you have this perspective that, okay, um, this is the long-term vision. Okay, This is what we want, I want uh, the church to be. Okay, Every person, every believer who's, um, who's attending, who's, uh, who's in this place of maybe maturity, this is what we want towards the end of, okay, let's say this calendar year. Okay, we are going to be talking about these several topics by January, we're talking about this. February, we're addressing this. March and through April, we're talking about this. So at the end of this year, we ideally like the, uh, the believers in the church to reach a place of maturity in these areas. Okay. Uh, I'm sure uh, you're talking about local church, learning about local church. So uh, in while learning about local church, I'm sure you looked at those 10 you know those pictures those blueprints that are there so those are very helpful you know, to to see that okay what are those different facets that we can actually develop that we can minister intentionally um, minister in those areas like drawing people to be the bride of christ the church to be the house of prayer so you know you're focusing on all these different areas and um, intentionally uh, ministering in those areas some messages could be about equipping the believer. Some messages could be inspiring, inspirational. Some could be motivational. Some could be about um, you know, struggles, challenges of a believer, all those things, you know. So we're talking about uh, it's So at the end of that period, uh, we can even have a long-term vision. Like the next five years, this is what we'd like to do. So, um, so have, we could have that in mind. So this is the perspective of someone who is going to be with that congregation, with that same audience. Um, and when I say same audience, of course, there will be others joining, there'll be people leaving, but then by and large, you know, it's going to be the same uh, same crowd, right? So, so we can have that long-term perspective. Uh, second thing is that understand that it's a journey, okay? Um, so it's not one-time thing. You know, it's it's not like okay, uh, hey, I shared about faith and you're still not getting it. <laughs> you know, I spent forty five minutes to an hour talking about it, and then you still have some doubts on it. You you're still not putting it to practice. Well, well, that's a reality, right? It is line upon line, precept upon precept. It's going to be layer upon layer. Okay, so there will be some who get it fully there will be some who will get 50 percent of it there'll be some who will just it will just go beyond their minds right they have not got it at all they're not grasped it at all so um yeah john paul i see your comment uh yeah so uh so some there'll be people in varying you know degrees of uh, maturity understanding receiving truth so 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 have this in mind. Hey, we are on a journey. You know, we are on a spiritual journey. Uh, we are journeying together as a church. So we are going to be building strength. You know, it's it's uh, it's like uh, uh, you know, it's, it's it's going to be slow. It's going to be slow. There are there are some who will be, who will receive it, and you know, we're going to see some growth and uh, change and transformation in that area. But it's going to be slow. Uh, the other thing is also that uh, you know, when it's a spiritual journey, you will we will have time to um, address a deeper level of the same topic um, a little later. Okay, I remember the first time we uh, we studied, um, it was at a church camp, uh, we were looking at the prophetic, okay, the gifts of the spirit and, uh, and the prophetic especially. Um, and we also um, kind of looked at um, 
we had these sessions, breakout sessions, uh, for the first time. Okay, for me it was the first time, and for the church also, I, I believe it was the first time. I'm talking about maybe uh, 2004, 2005, right? So, um, so it was like that. Um, it was for, so the when I compare that with some of the things that we are learning in the weekend schools, right, or even some of the uh, content, uh, what we see in the Bible college, I see that we have journeyed right? as ministers, as leaders, spiritual leaders, there's been a journey. As a congregation, there's been a journey, right? So, so these were things we introduced for the first time. So it was um, at a very uh, basic, simple uh, level. And uh, I see that, that uh, for the congregation, the understanding has increased. So for now when it comes to praying for each other uh, i see that okay when it comes to life group leaders ministering to leaders who are ministering to others well prophesying flows naturally okay so you don't have to really okay it helps if, if you prompt others but then uh, praying for others receiving what the holy spirit has to you know uh, impress in our hearts being mindful of uh, being sensitive to that and also sharing that with others is is a is a, is is far easier now and also people are more open to it and they're doing it okay rather than how it was uh, let's say 17 years ago uh, you know 15 years ago whatever so there's been a journey people have matured there have been enough and more opportunities to try out to live the truth um, so have that in mind it is a long-term perspective. It is a spiritual journey, and uh, we are building, you know, the body of Christ. Um, and it's, it's yes, it is taking time. It's a process, right? Um, so uh, just remember that. Okay. So otherwise, we'll get frustrated, right? Uh, we'll be like, okay, I talked about renewing the mind. Nobody's doing it. I know, uh, as a pastor, and I seem to be the only guy who's doing it. Uh, I've talked about declaration, declaring the word of God. Everybody's talking negative things, you know, over and over again. And I seem to be the only guy who's doing it. And right? so, uh, well, it is a process. It's going to take time. In fact, um, you know, I, it's very interesting. I was having a conversation with someone, um, you know, those days. And I remember being uh, very, very frustrated because Every time I said something, um, something that was faith-filled, a statement that the person could actually receive and declare and live out, it would counter with two negative things. You know, right? it was full of negative things. This is what is happening wrong in my life. You know, this is what, is. and uh, these people are like that. That people, a lot of complaints, a lot of grumbling, a lot of murmuring. And I got to spend some time. Uh, much later, right? It was actually this year, and we were traveling together, and so it's catching up. And I could see so much of a difference, so much of a difference, right? Uh, and faithful statements coming out, the word of God coming out um, from the same person. And right? so I, I thought that, hey, this person has changed. Uh, this person has received uh, the word. This person has, you know, put to practice the word and. He has changed, right? So, uh, so don't give up. You know, don't be discouraged. It is a journey. We are taking people along with us. Now, that's something that we need to be aware of. Um, as shepherds, you know, uh, we need to take the sheep along with us, right? Um, and then some will be slow, uh, but we need to take them along with us. Okay. Okay. Then, uh, in the process of doing that. Yeah, we, uh, you know, as we as we minister the word, we will we will be addressing certain things. We will be addressing certain faults, certain weaknesses, certain problems, uh, which others may not necessarily, you know, if you're a visiting person, they they may not necessarily, you know, preach that. But then, um, since you are journeying together and you know that, and then you know you will address those things, right? So 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 the thing is to. We have to address those, those things as we are journeying together. Right? Uh, we have to do it uh, with the grace of God and um, with the wisdom of God, but we have to address it. Right? Uh, okay. Um, and also, 
uh, as we are addressing it, uh, we have to be sensitive to what the Lord is doing and what the Lord is actually changing, uprooting, establishing. In other words, how is God dealing with us as a collective body? Okay, in that season, what is He doing? What is He releasing? Uh, uh, in us as a church, what is he? What is he taking out um, as as a church? Uh, what is he establishing us in? Right? So be sensitive to that. Okay, well, what does the what does the Lord want to release um, in us as a body? Be sensitive to that. Um, again, we have the opportunity to repeat things, and repetition is good. Uh, sometimes we uh, we think okay we think I've repeated this too many times um, and maybe we should just uh, not do it. Uh, don't worry about it. You know, just think about it. Certain you know certain foundational things like in Christ or gifts of the Spirit or authority of the believer and and, and things like that, the faith, um, hearing God's voice. Um, so you know these are topics that every believer needs and these are topics that every believer can be you know they are they are, uh, well it can be reiterated so that these truths can be um, established strong in their lives right um so um, just go ahead and and do it and each time when it's reiterated and the lord will also would have, would have dealt with us Know, about that same topic, and uh, if, we have been, if we have been studying, the Lord would have revealed certain things, certain aspects that we did not know earlier, or we did not have it in our lives earlier. The Lord is releasing that, and He's He's also teaching us. So we have also changed in that process, right? So um, we can teach from that experience. We can teach from having received that, um, those, and walked in that truth. Um, so, so the. The underlying thing: Don't be afraid of repetition, right? Uh, but uh, be mindful of uh, okay, when, how soon, how, what is the frequency, um, and uh, you know. So, so just be uh, schedule things out and uh, plan things out. Okay, so don't be afraid of uh, repeating things that we have taught previously. Um, yeah. So there's it's always uh, like like we saw. You know, it's 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 always. Um, it comes out stronger. It comes out um, uh, well. People are able to go to deeper depths with that same content, right? And uh, with all the additions of new revelations, and uh, so uh, it is helpful. Um, I remember, you know, personally, I remember, like we were actually having a, a teaching about life groups. Um, this was before we started the life group ministry, and then we introduced the life group ministry, the small group ministry in the church. So we had we took about uh, I think three Sundays actually to study that, and about the vision of life groups and and how then life group ministry, and then we introduced that uh, raised up leaders uh, in the church. Then I realized after a year that I still hadn't grasped the vision of the life group ministry. I'm making some very, very fundamental mistakes, right? About life group ministry, about the, about the purpose of life groups itself, and about you know appointing leaders. So these were two things that that had completely slipped my mind for whatever reason. I hadn't I hadn't grasped it. Right. Um, so so the thing is this the importance of repeating these Topic. So, it after a year when we were revisiting that, then I realized I'm doing something wrong. You know, my objective for you know this particular ministry or vision was completely off. And thank God that we were able to detect it after a year. Right? So, so things like that. So you know that yes, uh, in the long term it helps. Okay, so that is why. We revisit certain things, re-establish certain truths. The enemy also comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Okay, so whatever was ministered earlier, like people go through ups and downs, people go through challenges, and well, the enemy takes out certain things out of their lives, and maybe because of poor choices, decisions that they made, lives that they lead, whatever. Um, uh, so this will help, right? Okay, and and it's a it's it's an advantage, you know, for someone who's traveling with, journeying with the congregation. It's an advantage where we can 
repeat it where we can establish. Okay. Uh, the other thing is to share the whole counsel of God. Very important. Don't be a specialist. <laughs> okay. Uh, where we just every message, you know, we just go into one particular thing and then we're just talking about that. Um, and we're saying, okay, that's the solution for everything. Okay. Uh, it can be something like oh, brain tanks. That's it. Brain tanks over. So Paul, um, Paul says, you know, this is how it, this is how he says in um, um, Acts chapter twenty and verse twenty seven, right? Um, uh, maybe we can look at two verses. Acts chapter twenty and verse twenty. Um, Paul is talking to the uh, elders of the church. In Ephesus, he's just meeting them for the last time. Okay, that this, it's kind of this farewell uh, speech, or you know, he's uh, encouraging them, exhortation. Um, so verse twenty says, "How I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly from house to house." Okay, so he's saying that I kept back nothing, I withheld nothing that was helpful. Okay, if you go down to verse. 27 says, For I have shunned, I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Okay, so everything that was helpful, he shared. Verse 27, uh, I did not hold back, I did not, I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. So when you when you say the whole counsel of God, it's a it's a well-rounded thing, it's, a, it's addressing various aspects or various um, characteristics well, I would say aspects of a person's life um, maybe you know it's about the person's marriage about the person's character about parenting maybe about the person's profession um, about their ministry right about their life as a believer so many facets to their life right so Paul is saying, I did not hold back you know, that time that I spent with you. And we read about that. You know, um, well, Ephesians uh, in Acts chapter 19, uh, it says that um, when, he, when he goes to Ephesus and he prays with them, uh, he lays hands on them, they're filled with the Spirit. And it says that, uh, well, he uh, he start, he reasoned daily in the school of Tyrannus, and he continued for two years. Okay, so two years he spent there, um, and then he talks about different uh, things that happened there, the testimony of you know, natural things, etc. Um, so he spent the time there, and, uh, he ministered, he shared the whole counsel of God. Okay, uh, Lub Lubega, you have a question? Uh, I see your um, raised hand. Do you have a question? No, Pastor. It is just a mistake. Okay. No, it's, yeah, no problem at all. Okay. Okay. So, uh, share the whole counsel of God. Okay. So, make a plan to do that in the sense of, um, yeah. So, like we said earlier, don't be a specialist and saying, okay, this is this is the only thing. You know, this is of uh, lesser importance. Well, no. You know, when you when you look at the whole counsel of God, when you look at the different topics that are being um, that are being handled and that are being you know highlighted, you see that uh, God's word is so wholesome; it it covers the spirit, soul, and body you know of a person, right? So, uh, and all that is helpful, so need to be shared, and maybe things that are not going right. You know, in people, people who find things challenging, and it could be in a certain different area that we have not even considered. Right, um, so we can address that. So, in order to address that, we need to grow in that, right? So we need to grow. And again, coming back to you know, as we follow Jesus, as we journey with Him, uh, He knows His sheep. He knows that uh, we are overseers of His sheep. Right. So it's his concern. So he knows what the needs are. He knows that, okay, this is what my sheep want. So uh, even as he's placed us as um, his overseers for his sheep, um, he will make it known. Like there will be that as we follow him, there will be that making um, and it will be helpful for the congregation. Right. And we will be changing as well. Right. We will be following and we'll be learning and, uh, um, and then we'll be ministering those areas. Okay. 
the lastly uh, be practical right so um, when, whenever we are sharing these uh, deep spiritual truths um, be practical in the in the sense how do i you know how do i live that out how does one person live it out um, how do they apply it in their lives right make it relevant and um, make it uh, you know have an understanding of how the person lives and you know, how a, no, a normal believer lives every day so it should not be so detached from reality right um, what are the normal challenges day to day challenges so be practical uh, in uh, you know in, in sharing also instruction um, so that uh, they can receive it and put to practice right okay um, so things like you know, let for example, if you're saying okay, you need to spend extended hours of time in prayer, that's a good thing, you know. That's that's always good um, intimacy with God, uh, you know everything. But be practical in uh, you know how does that how does a, uh, let's say a software engineer who's spending about maybe uh, fourteen hours to sixteen hours or sometimes you know um, fourteen to sixteen hours in a in, in a day. Uh, in office and uh, maybe five days like that you know how does he or she do it right how can we facilitate that um, so don't put unreasonable demands you know, uh, on them because god god doesn't right? god he doesn't do that so so be practical be relevant you know and uh, and facilitate the spiritual growth and progress of the person okay uh, by all means you know inspire by all means, challenge people to live. You know, take that extra, or, or even stretch. By all means, but it should be within the realm of you know being practical and uh, relevant. Okay. okay. Any questions? Um. Any questions? Okay, so uh, ministering the word, you know, we, we, we can also look at, um, I was just looking at Jeffina, so I was thinking, you know, of maybe um, you have a YouTube channel, maybe you have something, you know, posting on uh, Instagram or so. So the, you know, uh, well, the dynamics would be different here, but uh, you can have that in mind. You know, if you have people who are very regularly following um, and receiving what you've been putting out, um so you know this these would apply as well right but uh, you know well it may not be as um i would say okay um you know it, it will be different because in person there is a, a the interaction is slightly more slightly better uh, here you know you can't uh, to some extent you can't really well you can read the comments you can if people you know do that right uh, so um so that's there's a difference there uh, but some of these things can be adapted and used for that as well okay um if there are no questions you know we'll let's look at the other thing okay if you're ministering as a visiting uh as a guest in um, maybe you're going to someone's church maybe somebody's invited for a meeting um so it is just maybe you know, one one off, right? A one off thing. We might get invited again, right? Uh, but it it depends, right? So it's a one off thing. So it's good to share a word in season, meaning what does this congregation really want in that season of life there? And then, and it's really exciting. You know, it can it can really be uh, if you're sharing the heart of God, uh, it can really boost or build up that congregation because they have no clue who you are and here you are you come you're visiting and and uh, what you're sharing really helps them the season of the season they are in as a church the season they are in as a as a body and um, you know you you sharing the heart of god it can be very very um, exciting it can be you know it can a prophetic word a word in season is building people up uh, knowing that they know that okay God knows the journey that we are on. Okay, um, it could be very, very revelatory. Right? Um, uh, okay, there, there could be more that we can talk about uh, about this. Uh, but some do's and don'ts. 
but don't step outside the bounds of what you are supposed to do when you're ministering. Okay, here again is a fine line. Okay, so when you say don't step outside your bounds or outside your boundary, it means that okay, if um, just honor their, their instruct, honor the leadership. Okay, uh, in the sense, if they say, as speaker, you have um, maybe half an hour, 30 minutes, or maybe 20 minutes, honor that. Okay. Um, don't say the Lord actually wanted me to share some more, you know, um, or the Lord asked me to go on. The Holy Spirit led me to share another 10 minutes. Right. Well, if you feel that kind of a prompting, check with the leadership. Okay. Check with them and say, okay, can we go on? You know, is it okay? Um, and it, it's best to do that before we start, right? Before we start the meeting, you know, is it okay if we, you know, if if I get a sense that we need to go for another five minutes, is it okay? Or is it a hard stop at, you know, 30 minutes, right? So it's, it's always good to have that. Um, or if, you know, when we check at the end of 30 minutes and in front of everyone, <laughs> it's, uh, it's going to be a little, you know, uh, difficult for the person to say, you know, you're putting that, you know, whoever has invited you in a spot. So it's best to do that before, you know, check and, you know, all these possibilities. Is it okay? Uh, you know, can I finish this way, et cetera, right? Um, and also if you say, okay, um, this is the dress code and just respect that, okay? Uh, it's good to do that. Um, well, they, they may not have the, you know, for example, you know, the they could be sensitive to certain things the way they do things maybe that's the culture of that place and uh, and uh, it's it's fine you know it does it's it's okay um, to just honor that maybe that's not how you are from where you come from um, but it's okay you know to as long as it doesn't contradict the truth right as long as it doesn't do that you know, it's okay to just go with it and uh, you know it could be the it could be a dress code it could be um yeah uh, things like that of that nature you know footwear especially in you know in a, in a country like uh, india you know um well it's about footwear you know some of the churches you, you leave your footwear outside uh, you can't step into the church without i mean in your shoes or you know some things like that so just go with it you know uh, that's not the time to say, you know, well, the Spirit of God dwells in me wherever I step on in holy ground. So, you know, so how can I not wear shoes? <laughs> uh, it's fine, you know, that's what they, they think. You just go with it. And sometimes, um, like, covering of the head, head covering. Um, if you're ministering as a, as a, if you're a woman and you're ministering in a place, uh, maybe it's a rural setting and uh, people expect women to cover their heads. Um, no, no problem, just do that, right? Uh, maybe you, you are liberated and uh, you know that there is freedom, uh, but uh, that head, maybe the proper understanding of head covering, you know, the, the others do not have, but the, uh, that's not a time to really argue and, you know, present, but just go with it. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay, any other thoughts? What do you think? Maybe you had some experience as a visiting a minister or even as a, you know, as a minister of, uh, of, of a particular church. Uh, what do you think? Or maybe something that you've observed. Um, okay, uh, before you uh, respond, no, I just, uh, uh, well, from experience, in the sense from what I observed, uh, this is what I heard Pastor Ashish mention, right? He mentioned, uh, when you are a guest in someone's house, don't rearrange their furniture. <laughs> okay, very simple. You've been invited as a guest, okay, and you're there. Let's say you just take went into the house. You know, don't start rearranging the table. I think the chair needs to go there. I think that we need to move the bed out. Uh, you know, I think this table, this lamp will look better there. Let's remove all these doormats. Um, so don't do that, right? 
while it could be glaring it could be certain things that uh, that really you know may need change but you know you, you can always do it at a you know as at a time uh, and in, in a in a way that's gracious you can as maybe suggestion as maybe ideas in a way that would be acceptable um so you can always talk discuss and share those suggestions but don't do this right um don't start so it's not just about the uh, placement of things but also about how things are done right so sometimes we can say okay stop 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 no because just because they're given us freedom you know, we just kind of disrupt the whole thing how it's done and uh, well let me not go down well okay so we'll stop here and we'll continue in next class thank you god bless thank you pastor thank you